Good morning, my name is Bob Thomas. I'm one of the pastors at Stony Brook United Methodist Church in Gahanna, Ohio. And this is our sunrise service. I welcome you in the name of our risen Lord and bring greetings from our senior pastor, the Reverend Mary Jo Yakel, and our associate pastor, the Reverend Jennifer Casey. We are blessed this morning to have Kelly Shellhammer as our musician for the service. And welcome to Fisher's Barn, which has been the setting for this sunrise service for several years. The writer of the book of Revelation calls us to worship and praise this Easter morning. Jesus Christ, the Paschal Lamb who was slain, lives. Worthy is the Lamb to receive power and wisdom and glory and blessing. Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto God forever and ever. Amen. Listen now as Kelly Shellhammer plays for us a festive medley of Easter songs. Christ the Lord is risen today, up from the grave, and crown him with many crowns. Let us pray. Gracious Redeemer, we come to you this morning of resurrection. We, like Mary Magdalene, expect to find you among the tombs and grave clothes of our world. But you are alive. Sin cannot hold you. Death cannot bind you. And just as we have been weeping and mourning that you have been taken from us, you meet us in the garden of new life and send us running to share the good news of the gospel to the very ends of the earth. You are risen indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen. Listen now as Kelly plays for us the beautiful lyric affirmation, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place as we prepare our hearts for a time of prayer.
Will you bow with me now for a time of prayer? Thank you, redeeming God, for the assurance that you are here in this very place. And thank you for the Easter message that brings hope out of despair, resurrection out of defeat, and new life out of death. You can call dry bones to dance. You give living water so that new life blossoms. You urge flowers to push their way through winter-hardened soil. So we bring before you the dead and dried up places in our lives, that through your grace you might speak our name, and we may discover newness of life. Forgotten dreams, lapsed intentions, hardened resentments, grief to which we cling like children who cling to a worn but cherished toy or blanket. These we hand over to you, knowing that you will return them mended, washed, renewed, transformed. We bring before you the places in our lives and in our world where despair reigns unchallenged. We grieve for the continuing pandemic where lives are being lost here in our country and around the world. We offer our despair in the midst of violent, senseless shooting, carnage, and death. Point us toward actions, however small, which lead to a more hopeful future for ourselves, our communities, and the world. Gracious God, we thank you that you walk beside us as we journey through life. And because you are with us, we can accept each new day with its joys and its sorrows, all as a gift. Because you are with us, we gain courage to meet the challenge of the day, choosing life, not death, as we move through time. As you raised Jesus from the dead, raise us to new life, day by day, whispering our names. And so we pray with bold confidence in the strong name of our risen Lord Jesus the Christ, and following his instruction, call you Father, and pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hear now the Easter Gospel, as recorded by St. John, the 20th chapter, Verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went to the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter, reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in and saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? 
Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what he had said to her. May God add his blessing to this reading of the gospel text. Will you bow with me for a moment of prayer? Gracious God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. In 1887, 22 years after the assassination of President Abraham Lincoln, his coffin was dug up and opened because there were constant rumors that his body was not in the grave. So they dug up the body, and it was there. But the rumors continued. So 14 years later, they had to dig it up again. And both times, witnesses were present who testified that Lincoln's body was, in fact, in the grave. Three days after the death of Jesus Christ, similar rumors began to spread throughout the land of Israel. Only this time, there were no witnesses who could say they had seen his body in the tomb. In fact, to the contrary, many witnesses seemed claimed to have seen him alive out of his grave, even having talked to him after his resurrection. This past year, there have been so many tombs and countless deaths that could not even have proper tombs since the outbreak of the pandemic. Nearly 2,800,000 people have died of COVID-19 to date. And even with the increasing number of vaccinations, the death toll worldwide continues to mount. And there has been so much grieving and weeping over these innumerable losses. The pandemic brutally taking loved ones. Jobs have been lost. Our way of life has literally shifted, and still in the back of our minds, there is a lingering fear of our own possible deaths. This Resurrection Sunday, we visit a tomb, but this is the tomb of Jesus. And we go while it is still dark with Mary Magdalene, and she sees that the stone has been rolled back from the tomb. And the message that she delivers to Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved, it's not about resurrection, but about a missing body. John's resurrection story is not a triumphant story yet, but instead leads us to look at and examine the reality of death, where we unexpectedly but intimately and wondrously encounter the risen Jesus. Now, John painstakingly describes how Jesus' disciples, male and female, cope with the Lord's death and absence, and then finally come to believe in his resurrection. And one of the words that John uses very often in his resurrection story is translated either as see, know, or understand. Mary Magdalene went to Peter and the other disciples saying, we do not know where they have laid him. The two disciples appear to compete to get to the tomb, and then they go inside one by one, and they see nothing but strips of linen cloth and the cloth that had been around Jesus' head rolled up carefully. The beloved disciple seems exceptional because he saw and believed. But then the very next verse seems to contradict this because he's also one of those who did not yet understand the Scriptures that Jesus must rise from the dead. If he believed that Jesus has risen, he too would have announced to the others just as Mary does. Although we might expect that the disciples would recognize Jesus, remember his words, understand the scripture, this is not the case for the disciples, at least not yet. 
they return to their homes, and they go very quickly. You can't help but remember how they stepped back in fear when their teacher was arrested in the garden. And after seeing the empty tomb, somehow that same fear possesses them again so that the disciples lock themselves in a house that very day. But let's go back to the tomb. The writer lingers over the ordinary just as the director's camera holds our attention long enough to magnify the wonder of a cinematic moment. A large stone rolled away from the tomb. Some grave clothes unraveled, some carefully rolled together. This lingering skepticism, the capacity of death to stifle hope, destroy the future. But hope is only stifled. The rumors of the resurrection rekindle the flickering flame of hope. At first, the woman's testimony sends the men away, pondering the significance of the empty tomb. In fact, men have been pondering that ever since. Yet Mary remains in the garden alone. Gardens are a place where heaven and earth collide. Jesus approaches her with the humility of the divine taking on human flesh. In the words of Isaiah 53, he, he possessed no splendid form for us to see, no desirable appearance, just God in human form. In that ordinary moment, her expectations collide with a radical new reality. The one she mistakes as a mere servant, the gardener, called her by name. Just as the Creator, the one Jesus called Father, named humanity as created in our image, imagio dei. The one mistaken for a gardener calls the confused, sorry woman by name, and she knows him when he speaks to her and says her name. How do we speak to and about one another in the light of these rumors of resurrection? Death destroyed, hope restored. The resurrection confirms the good news that when met by God in human form and called by name, the task of those who bear the image of God into the world is to bring this testimony to everyone. It is a familiar life-altering story, and the next generation must hear it. And yet, this Easter morning, we still ask, how can it be Easter when it is still so dark? You see, darkness is not merely a time of day. It can also be the absence of light. And the absence of light would mean those times in our lives when we feel that God is not here, God is not present. We've spent the last year locked in the tombs of our homes out of necessity. But today, the rehearsal of our darkness is interrupted by the explosive proclamation of resurrection. The God who spoke light into existence has raised to life the one described as light of the world. The God who donated dignity to dirt when he very breathed the very life into Adam as the living God in Christ has conquered death. This is what St. Paul proclaimed when he wrote to the church in Corinth, recorded in 2 Corinthians, this is the new creation. And so today we celebrate the new creation. Dietrich Bonhoeffer in his sermon, God is on the Cross, writes this, God is not a matter of mood. God is still present even when we are not in the mood to meet him. Darkness or light good health or health crisis, economic depression or recession, natural disaster or natural beauty, success or failure. It does not matter. This is Easter. Catherine of Siena tells us to be glad and to celebrate. Lose your mindless fear and take courage today. 
No, don't ever be afraid, she says. No matter what's happened to you before, that's right, don't be afraid. No matter what you may see coming, take courage because Christ was crucified for you. Easter is not only about what God has done in and through Christ, but it's also about what we are now able to do in partnership with the risen Lord who died and rose again. Henri Nouwen offers gentle marching orders for those who believe in the risen Lord. The Lord asks us to go where it hurts, to enter into the places of pain, to share the brokenness, the fear, confusion, and anguish. The Lord challenges us to cry out with those in misery, to mourn with those who are lonely, and to weep with those in tears. The Lord requires us to be weak with the weak, vulnerable with the vulnerable, and powerless with the powerless. The Lord invites us into full immersion in the condition of being human. This is what life is about. It's being sent on a trip by a loving God who is waiting at home for us to return and is eager to look at the pictures we took and hear about the friends we made. When we travel with the eyes and ears of the God who sent us, we will see wonderful sights, hear wonderful sounds, meet wonderful people, and be happy to return home. Then Nowen says, Joy does not simply happen to us. We have to choose joy and keep choosing it every day. It is a choice based on the knowledge that we belong to God and have found in God our refuge and our safety, and that nothing, not even death, can take God away from us. So, Even with a a lingering pandemic, the resulting economic uncertainty, racial unrest, gun violence, and all the rest, I'm here to announce to you that today is Easter, and new life is the gift that God offers us. And I want to remind you that Stony Brook Church is working hard to make a difference for good in the lives of those struggling because of the economic, emotional, and spiritual impacts of the pandemic. And I invite you, I invite you to join me in praying every day for our legislators who were entrusted with the safety and security of all citizens amid the lingering racial disparities and the rampant gun violence. And I've gotten my COVID vaccination and I hope and pray that you've gotten or will be getting yours. And in addition, I'm going to continue wearing my mask and social distance and wash my hands until everyone is in the clear. Resurrection starts in the gloom of a garden cemetery, in the real world full of hard, harsh, humorous, and holy realities of life. Today, we celebrate Jesus' resurrection from the dead and bear witness to Mary's resurrection from the ache, gloom, and pain of her teacher's death. But she is transformed when the teacher, Rabboni, calls her by name, and she runs with joy to share the great good news. The good news this morning for us is that Jesus is still calling and he knows your name. So pay attention, my friends. Listen and rejoice. It is true that we serve a risen Savior, and because he lives, we too can live. Alleluia, alleluia, amen.
Receive now the benediction. Because the tomb is empty, your life can be full. So go into every place and every day as people brimming with the love of God. Listen for the living Lord to whisper your name. Be graceful in spirit, hopeful in word, faithful in deed. Live for the risen Christ as Christ lives in you. Alleluia. Amen.